This is the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. In this episode, we're going to have a quick look at VLAN routing with the router interface command. So, as usual, from config T, um, what we're going to do is we need to, from a VLAN, we're going to assign a router interface, and then on that router interface, we're going to apply an IP address to it. So, um, let's build two VLANs. We're going to build a VLAN 10, and we're going to uh, assign an interface. So uh, we'll tag interface Ethernet uh, 1 slash 2 slash 1, for example. And then under this VLAN, we're going to create something called a router dash interface and VE for virtual Ethernet, and then we'll assign it a number. So the number does not have to be the VLAN number, but the best practice is that it should match because otherwise you're going to come back to this configuration later and you're not going to be able to figure out which VE matches which VLAN just by looking at it. So we will assign it the same number. So once that's done, we now have an interface on this device called VE10. So I can just switch to interface VE10 and it, we now have this interface. So the, so the configuration, you can see the prompt changes the config VIF or virtual interface 10 and we can assign an IP address right on the interface. So let's say IP address uh, 10.0.0.0 one slash 24 um, and then we're gonna we'll make another v VLAN so let's say VLAN 20 uh, and we'll tag e one slash one slash one so a different port in this case could be the same doesn't really matter we will assign a router interface uh, VE 20 okay and then an interface VE20 here, we will give in an IP address, IP address say 20.0.0.1 slash 24. So we now have two VEs. So let's look back at the running configuration here. So we have our two VLANs, right? Uh, tag 121 and then 111. So interface VE10 is assigned to VLAN 10 and VE20 is assigned to VLAN 20. So we look down at the configuration here we are going to see those VEs with the IP addresses assigned. So if we have a look at show, um, say, interface brief, we're going to see all of our interfaces. And right at the bottom here, we see VE10, which is up, and VE20, which is down. So there's actually nothing plugged into those. We can do a show interface VE10 to get detail on it. So we can see that it's up and up. Uh, we can see its IP address, its MTU, etc. Uh, and 20. So 20 is down. There's physically nothing plugged into it. So what you're going to find is if I do a show IP route, you're going to see that we see the 10 subnet in the routing table via port VE10. Um, and it's D for directly connected, but we don't see that 20 VLAN. So it only gets put in the in the routing table if at least one port in that VLAN is up and active. Otherwise, there's no point um, putting a route in the routing table that the device can't get to. So if we plug that cable in to VLAN 20, and I show an IP, do a show IP route again, we now see VE10 and VE20. So as soon as I do this, I now have those two directly connected routes in my routing table, and I can now route uh, from VLAN to VLAN. So um, the, the other thing is you can do a show IP interface, and under the show IP interface, we see here's my two VEs with their IPs assigned. Are they OK? Uh, and their status, they're up, protocol up, and they're in the default VRF. So if we had, um, you know, another VRF or multiple VRFs, we could assign different VEs to different VRFs. But in this case, where everything's in the default. Um, and once we have those VEs, so if I go back to interface VE10 here, this works just like a regular interface. So I could say assign IPOSPF area zero to that interface, or I could assign a VE to that interface, uh, sorry, an ACL to that interface. Um, so it, it works just like a physical interface once it's, uh, you know, up and active. So that's it. Thanks for joining.